What's up? This is Parker Jameson from the band Starkill. This is Brittany Slays from Unleash the Archers. Hey, this is David Rivera from Ex Mortis. This is Cobra Page from Cobra and the Lotus. Hail and kill everybody. This is Ross the Boss from New York City. Hi, this is Diana van Giesbergen from Xandria, and you're listening to the Great Metal Debate Podcast. Welcome, Great Metal Debate listeners, to yet another of our artist interviews. We're continuing in our quest to bring you some of the best, most talented, and amazing musicians in this new millennium of metal. I'm so pleased today to be joined by Danny Marino and Vicky Siracus with the Montreal-based metal band The Agonist. Thank you both for being here today. Thanks for having us. On the- yeah, thanks. <laughs> Well, we're here in Nashville, Tennessee at one of the Agonist's first shows on your U.S. tour supporting uh, the new album, Eye of Providence. How have the first few days of the uh, tour gone? Uh, it's been great so far. Uh, everyone on this uh, the Revolver tour is super cool, really nice people, and uh, the crowd's been good. Have, great to be back in the U.S. It's been a couple of years now for us. Yeah, um, as far you know, the shows that we've done went pretty well you know but we did have some trouble getting into the country um our visas were delayed so we had to uh cancel a few couple shows in the beginning which isn't a great start but you know once we made it and did the first show that's when things started moving and it was great <laughs> you, know, you guys have had some issues this year uh with the tour in europe uh, your headliner canceling and then i know you were sick for a little bit How, how's the band rally together to get past those sorts of challenges we've always had challenges i think i think maybe every band does it does feel like we have more challenges than most but uh we've gone through so many obstacles that when something hits us it's just like well nothing's impossible we find a way. We always find a way. It's kind of a never-say-die attitude. Well, uh, on this current tour, I know you're splitting time opening on the Revolver tour, some dates with Flyleaf, and then other dates uh, with Allegion, bands with some very different vocal uh, uh, musical styles. How, how do you all deal with playing in front of fans with maybe different musical expectations, and does that, Im- uh, does that impact your approach to performing or maybe even your set list? Well, yes, it does affect our set list, especially for Flyleaf, because it's a support slot and we're only playing 45 minutes. So we had to carefully, you know, choose which songs are kind of better for the crowds that we will be playing for, you know. Um, But I think that's the only way it affects us as far as performing the songs and how we play them and how we are on stage. I think that's pretty solid every night. Danny, I know the Agonist is open for a wide variety of symphonic bands, death bands. Over your time with the band, how has that impacted you guys? Uh, we, we've always been very open-minded in the kind of music style as what we write. There's no barriers, really. But touring with all these different kinds of bands really influenced us because we you know, started touring when we were like 20 years old and we were very green, didn't know too much. And we were just thrown out there with black metal bands, death metal bands, symphonic bands, hardcore bands, and a lot of that shaped the coming albums. Like there was a big influence there had seeing some of these great bands night after night, and then you get inspired by some of what they do. Well, let's talk for a moment about uh, your most recent album, I of Providence, just out this spring. Uh, how do you all feel the uh, album has been received by fans generally? Um, I think it's been very positive. You know, um, fans were definitely skeptical when we started releasing songs, you know, one by one. But once the actual album was released and they heard the whole thing, you know, first song to last song, I personally haven't seen anything negative. And it just feels it feels very rewarding, you know, to know that you made an album that pleases you, first of all, but also fans 
and potential new fans. I understand you all are playing a lot of the new songs live. Yeah, this, the set on these uh, I Have Providence tours is very heavily I Have Providence. <laughs> we really want to get the, the new album out there. We want to show everyone. We still play some old songs, too, from other albums, but the focus is really showcasing the new record. I know you all have been showcasing it with a lot of new videos. Looks like uh, Century's been very supportive of you all. What's it been like putting out all those videos, especially for you, being new to doing videos? Um, it's been nonstop since I joined the band, actually. I mean, I joined, we worked on the album together, we tracked the album, we mixed it, it was ready, and then once the album was ready, we were like, okay, let's start doing videos now. You know, we started doing videos and we started touring so it's been non-stop for a year yeah about a year that i've been in the band and it's great actually because when you're working on something that much and you're active at that degree you know it seems that it's worth something you know now vicky the story of your coming to join the agonist has been well recounted so i'm not going to ask you to repeat that once again but if you would share a little bit with our listeners just about your background where you're from and kind of how you came into music um sure uh i was born in chicago and i lived there till i was 10 then i moved to greece and i was in greece when uh, the agonist found me um as far as music goes, I've um, always been into music ever since I was a kid. I um, play a little bit piano, a little bit guitar, but not. I'm self taught, you know. And as far as vocals go, I've also had a bit of classical training, but that's about it, you know. So I'm kind of self taught when it comes to vocals as well. And um, I guess I didn't decide, you know, one day that I will. I'm going to be a musician professionally. It's just something that happened throughout the course, you know, of time. It just, it felt more and more that it was going that way, and I just embraced it. So you've been in the band about a year. Let me turn to you, Danny, and ask, what, what's it been like integrating a new uh, singer into the band, and, and how has that worked out so far? Obviously, you've made a new album, done a fair amount of touring. Uh, what, what's that experience been like? It's been a nightmare. <laughs> She's too nice. That's the problem. No, um, it's been great. Uh, it's just the whole band is completely rejuvenated. Uh, we have more positivity and energy for the project than we've ever had since the day we started. And I owe that a lot to the new attitude of the band, of everyone's just working together and really happy to be together. And... Uh, so far i'm I'm just really happy to to move forward i'm just i'm more excited you know to to keep doing more like more tours write a new album we're already talking about writing a new album i already have a bunch of parts i'm excited to like try and put it together because you just the creation of i of providence was the most like positive rewarding you know artistic experience that i've ever had so i just want to do it again Vicky, I have a couple of questions from some of our Great Metal Debate listeners for you. Uh, Elena from New York says, I've noticed how easily many singers incorporate both clean and harsh vocals, but for others it's like an impossible task. Uh, she wants to know if you think anyone could be taught growling, or is that something that you just have to have a natural talent for? Um, for growling specifically, I think it's a bit easier than for singing. Because, you know, singing, it's on a scale, there's notes. If you can't hit those notes, you know, naturally, if you don't have a talent for it, it's kind of hard to progress. Growling is a lot more, it's hard, it's difficult, but it, it's more physical, you know. It's more about breathing, projecting your voice in the right way. So it's not as precise and it's not as, I find, yeah, you don't have to necessarily be naturally talented for growling so um i don't know i i would say that in the end you don't know if you don't try something so that would be my piece of advice to anyone you know sounds good uh another fan ashivari from toronto asked what was your inspiration to learn to master singing in so many different styles inspiration as in a specific person or just in general yeah, i'd say um, I, w I, I think just um, 
the fact that I listen to so many different genres that, you know, have uh, so many different styles of singing. And the um, first couple years that I was singing, I was just uh, doing what felt natural to me and what, you know, my safety zone, basically. And then I would listen to some other music that I just could not do the vocals. And one day I was just like, well, why can't you do it? You know, maybe you're doing something wrong. So I think that was kind of a push to try and do new stuff that didn't feel right at the beginning. So, um, but, you know, practice makes perfect, they say. So uh, I think that was it. Well, beginning to fish, finish up with you folks, uh, Danny, why don't you tell our listeners what's going on with Agonist for the remainder of 2015, this tour and beyond? Well, uh, we're doing this whole tour. It's just started, so we just came back from Europe. Uh, we have other plans throughout the world that I can't exactly talk about yet. <laughs> It'll be available, the news, you know, over the coming weeks and months we're going to be new tours uh obviously there's still a lot of places we need to go so those places that are clamoring for you guys to come uh and play just keep watching the website and keep an eye out and you you're saying you may well be there soon that's it just keep asking keep throwing our name out there it's you know sometimes that's how things happen so yeah that and beyond that i mean i think uh i'm always just writing new material so eventually we're going to start trying to put together a new record next year or something or i don't know when exactly but when it happens <laughs> we'll let you know awesome and finally for folks who are listening uh, who want to support the agonist by purchasing music and merchandise and we strongly encourage them to do that uh how can they do that uh well first of all the best place to find the band and contact the band right now is our official facebook page and on that, we have links to everything, you know, iTunes and Google and Spotify, all that stuff to, you know, stream and download and purchase the album. And then for merch, we have stores, um, links to stores as well on our Facebook. There's Indie Merch for the States, I believe. And it's uh, IndieMerchStore.com for the USA and uh, Band Brand for Canada and Empiricon for Europe. And some of those places also ship to worldwide places as well, like Asia and Australia and things like that. If you haven't picked up this new album, Eye of Providence, I encourage all of you to do just that. It is a great album. Try to catch the Agonist if you're in the U.S. on the remainder of their 2015 tour and keep an eye out other places throughout the world. Vicki, Danny, I want to thank you both for joining us on the Great Metal Debate podcast. So nice to speak with you both and really looking forward to the show this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're looking forward to the show as well.